All right, good morning, everybody. <clears throat> uh, as Elliot said, my name is Eric Hendricks. Uh, I'm here at NASA Glenn Research Center. Um, <clears throat> on the agenda this morning, I saw I was just Eric, and I didn't have a last name, so evidently Elliot thought everybody knows me, but... Um, <laughs> Um, so I'm going to be briefing you today about a uh, application of OpenMDO, and this might be one of our larger and more ambitious application efforts uh, going on right now for for OpenMDO, and um, and and so I'm, I'm going to be representing kind of a large team here uh, that's that's working on that. So I know there's a bunch of folks in the room and online. Uh, if you're working on this, can you just stand up so, uh, if you're in the room so that people can see? who's all working on this, because there's quite a few people, and this is even just a small portion of the team that's here in the room. So uh, just wanted to recognize all of them for their hard work here as well. Um, there's too many to name, but. Um, so, uh, what else? yeah, so we're talking about model-based systems analysis and engineering for the Sustainable Flight National Partnership, and I'll get into what all those terms mean here over the next few slides. Um, just a quick outline so you can kind of see where we're going. I'll, I'll start out with uh, a few charts, kind of background about systems analysis um, and, and what we're doing uh, within our project for that and how that kind of connects to open to MDAO and open MDAO uh, in that process. And then talk about kind of our vision and our plan for this MBSA and E uh, activity and then go through kind of our recent development efforts. This is activity has been going on for about a year. So we'll talk a bit about how we're executing on that plan and, and kind of the future of where we're going. Um, and then wrap up with a few closing thoughts that are a little bit more OpenMDO specific here on, on things that we're doing and maybe struggling with and things like that just for the, the uh, community's awareness. So, um, <clears throat> so systems analysis and MDAO. Um, wanted to kind of lay this out here in terms of what systems analysis is for our group. Uh, and we pulled this definition from uh, the uh, International Institute for Applied Systems Analysts. Um, so I work for the Advanced Air Transport Technology Project, uh, Transport Technology Project. So we're focused mainly on subsonic transport aircraft and developing the technologies um, and, and working with you know industry and academia on developing technologies for, for those vehicles. And my team specifically um, does systems analysis and we're looking at doing you know formal inquiries uh, to help identify better courses of actions and making decisions, right? And this is considering objectives, constraints, um, things like costs, benefits, risks, all in a, some sort of comparative framework, right? Is, is kind of the key thing in looking at alternatives. So, so those are, we've highlighted kind of the key words in that, in that definition that we are really focused on. Um, but what our team does is actually two different things, and we've highlighted that on this next slide here, hopefully, um, where we've, we, we, we have this dual role in our team of what things we're working on. Uh, and I've taken, some of you might be aware of the, and familiar with the systems engineering V diagram. Um, we've taken this and adapted it for what, what we do as systems analysts, which we think is a little bit different. Um, so we, the, the left-hand side here is all about decomposing the problem, starting with, you know, needs and, and stakeholder, you know, uh, requirements and things like that, then decomposing that into system level requirements. And then our, objective is not to decompose this all the way to specific components that we're engineering and designing, but really to get down to aircraft conceptual design um, studies that we can do that then provide the technologists um, what things that they should go off and, and do detailed research on later. Um, and then once they've done their research, then they can bring this back up uh, through integration into system level models. So our dual role really is on the left-hand side here of taking stakeholder needs and discussions and do what we call looking out. And this is looking out to the future of what aerospace, what, an, what an, uh, a future vehicle might look like and doing ideation and imagining what a future concept in 2030s, 2050s could look like. And so we're, we're developing these vision vehicles and developing um, and help, helping to formulate what we call tech challenges, which are which technologies are we gonna go about researching to make these vehicles happen, right? Um, from there, we hand off a lot of those ideas to um, our projects and sub-projects here at NASA that go off and do the, the hardcore research in wind tunnels and with CFD and other things to develop some of these technologies and actually make them real and test them out and, and get results. And then the other area where, so that green box at the bottom is not 
our systems analysis group, right? Um, but the right-hand side then is taking all the technology results that we get from them, so getting wind tunnel data, getting CFD data, and plugging that back into our conceptual design tools and saying, now do these vehicles, after we've researched the technologies that we thought would need, we'd need to have to make them possible, do those technologies now when we integrate them back into the system deliver on the results? And do, can we do that validation and verification back to the stakeholder needs? Um, so this is, I think, a really good way of explaining what we're trying to do in systems analysis in our group in particular in terms of looking out at future concepts, but also looking in at what we're doing internally and assessing those results compared to those needs. Um, so just wanted to give you a little bit of background there about how we view systems analysis within our project. Um, <clears throat> so the, the next thing I want to highlight here on this chart, though, is there's this dotted box in the middle that just got added, and that's this new systems analysis and uh, model-based systems analysis and engineering framework that is going to help us do that V diagram, right? And, and OpenMDO is, as you'll see on the next, you know, throughout the rest of this presentation, is a key enabler for doing, um, tracking the requirements, building up the concepts, and then integrating technologies back in to do the verification along the way. So, so kind of with that overview of systems analysis um, and, and where we sit, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about MBSA and E and the, specifically the Sustainable Flight National Partnership. So um, this is probably a term that most people haven't heard of uh, within this group, but um, NASA's really put together a plan um, to develop technologies to support um, sustainable flight aircraft in really focused right now on the 2030s timeframe for entry into service. And um, NASA's really focused that research into four key areas. Uh, one of those is advanced aerodynamics and airframes, um, high rate composite manufacturing, um, one of the biggest challenges with getting new vehicles into the fleet, especially those that use composites, is making them fast enough. Um, uh, and then the third area is hybrid uh, thermally efficient uh, engines uh, and sm small core engines. And then the last one is electrified aircraft propulsion in, in various flavors. So we have these four key like research thrusts that we're, we're working on. Each one of these has multiple projects working on them and they ha they're all gonna culminate in flight tests, ground tests, demonstration cases, um, and this is kind of that core research that you saw on the bottom of, of that per previous V diagram. Um, one of the big things there, though, on the right-hand side is you see that big sweeping arrow pointing all up to this model-based systems analysis and engineering line at the top. And this is kind of on that V diagram going up the right-hand side, integrating all these technologies back onto concept vehicles and being able to assess them and, give ben and, and evaluate their benefits. And so we put a, a notional dot out there at the end of fiscal year 28 at the top, which we're hoping to do one or more digital flight tests of uh, these vision vehicles um, using uh, the, the research and the, the data that's come out of all these different, um, these four, di the different tests and, and demos that are, that, are, that are in each of these four areas. Um, so that MBSA and E-line there is a key digital integration of all the work that NASA is doing for sustain, sustainable flight uh, aircraft uh, with the entry, for entry into service in the 2030s timeframe. So it's a very big uh, and ambitious effort to tie all this together and OpenMDO is gonna be a key part of, of developing that, that MBSA and E framework. So uh, I've talked to a bit of this um, on the previous charts, but really this MBSA and E uh, vision is it's a digital integration across all these projects um, which will support assessments, advancement, and adoption of, of these technologies for 2030s entry into service uh, of transport aircraft. Um, and so from that, we derived two key objectives. One of them is building up this uh, MBSA and E framework. Uh, and this is something that's happening across lots of projects at NASA um, and, and basically putting together the tools in, in an integrated chain, tool chain that will allow us to do this, this very efficiently do this uh, digital integration. And then the second thing is to work with all these projects to actually uh, model and um, reference vehicles, advanced concepts and vision vehicles, and then do these technology assessments along the way so that we can do these, these digital flight tests as we were talking about on the previous charts. Um, so that's kind of our, our key uh, objectives there. And 
flowing right along with the objectives. We have a couple key phases. Uh, so the first one is developing this MBSA new framework or ecosystem. Um, so we're creating building blocks for different disciplines, as you'll see on the upcoming slides, linking them together, you know, evaluating um, this framework with some demonstration cases and things along the way. And um, as you'll see, we're, we're coupling this with MBSE tools as well. Um, and then the second phase of this uh, work is all about working with the other projects within the Sustainable Flight National Partnership at NASA and all of their industry partners and academic partners. Uh, the FAA is involved in the SFNP as well. So we're working with a broad collection of, of groups uh, to then apply this framework to their vehicles and technologies to do these benefits assessments. So um, that's really what's going to happen in, in FY, um, starting in FY24 and kind of working out, as you see, kind of in the timeline there at the bottom. And some of this, the, the, the key dates there as we move farther out are, uh, and, and the integration that we're going to have with those projects is still a little bit TBD as they uh, figure out their project schedules. But um, we see this as a long-term capability for us as well. Um, so you see there's future spirals of this going out uh, farther beyond uh, kind of this time frame here. Um, and as we start to look at ve concept vehicles that might be coming in down the line in 2050 time frame, we'll hopefully be applying this uh, uh, framework in that context as well. <clears throat> um, so I went back to the, the uh, integrated uh, SFMP swim lane chart here and showed basically each of these different bubbles is gonna be integrated into this top line at some point. And there's gonna be a lot of data connections and things that have to happen and points of engagement and communication between all the different groups. So that was really the, the main point of the slide is just to show the level of, of integration that's gonna to have to happen across a huge portion of NASA's uh, aeronautics research portfolio to make this, this work, so. <clears throat> okay, so that was kind of hopefully gave everybody some overview of kind of where we're at and what the vision is and, the, and kind of the high level plan. Um, what I want to talk about here now is what we've done over the last year or so in terms of making this a reality. So um, <clears throat> what we've started to lay out is an open MDO based framework uh, where we're going to be uh, integrating a lot of disciplinary analysis tools and I apologize, it's probably a little hard to see. Um, in the XDSM diagram at the bottom, but we'll go through it in a little bit more detail on the, on the following charts. But um, we're building an open MDO based framework um, that's gonna allow us to, to integrate a lot of different disciplinary analysis tools to hopefully do conceptual design and, and integrate um, you know, technology results and data from all these flight tests and ground tests into our analysis capability for conceptual design um, through this, this process. So, um, <clears throat> We're, we're coupling existing tools together. We're also producing um, new and optimized tools for working in, in a be better in an open and MDO um, environment along the way. So um, some key things, this is, XDSM is kind of our current view of how this is all coupling together. It's, it's evolving as we speak. So um, th things may change and things might have to adapt as we look at additional uh, test cases and design cases along the way, but we're gonna be using OpenMDO, obviously, as the integration framework, but we're also using uh, the solvers and the optimizers from OpenMDO as a, as a key enabler here. Um, we're connecting in a bunch of traditional disciplinary design tools that we have uh, within NASA in this process, so um, things for you know, propulsion and, and structures and aerodynamics and mission analysis and things like that. Um, but we're hoping to make this somewhat multi-fidelity so that we can adjust the fidelity as appropriate for the, the technologies um, that we're looking at. And really these disciplinary boxes are key points of engagement and, and opportunities for us to engage with uh, all the, the projects that are working on the, the technology development as we can maybe integrate their models and data into those um, uh, disciplines as we go along. Um, we're also expanding this to include some disciplines that we haven't traditionally looked at within our uh, systems analysis studies. So things like cost or stability and control, um, we, those were oftentimes secondary things way down, down the line that we didn't really consider, but we're hoping to integrate those uh, uh, further up, upstream in our analysis process. So you'll see a little bit more on some of those here coming up. And, and one of the big things for us is really as we are laying this out is trying to define some clearly, well, define the interfaces between these different disciplinary tools very clearly so that we can, you know, 
swap things in and out as appropriate and have you know easy connections between all these different capabilities. So um, that's something that we're we're trying to to build towards as well and, and define in this process. And then the last thing on this chart that I want to highlight here is we're we're thinking about model-based systems engineering and you know kind of that traditional uh, you know it's it's something that's different than systems analysis for systems versus systems engineering, but we're trying to figure out how do we connect these two things together so that we can use, you know, magic draw or some of the system L tools in connection with OpenMDO and have that provide inputs and output and, and assess the outputs and at the same time also do uncertainty quantification in this process as well. So um, both of those things are really aren't shown in the XDSM uh, necessarily, but they, they impact the inputs and the outputs and how we're going to connect those to, to the bigger picture. Um, <clears throat> so this is kind of a high level view of the XDSM as we're currently laying it out. I'll qu quickly flip through and kind of give you um, some highlights of what we're doing in a lot of these different disciplinary boxes and the tools that we're coupling in and how we're doing some of that. Um, so on the propulsion side, we see this as kind of the first step in our um, analysis process. We're connecting in both MPSS and PyCycle, uh, which allow us to do the thermodynamic cycle models. Um, I think most of you are probably familiar with some of these tools, but um, MPSS is a you know, NASA developed package from a long time ago that's, that's now managed by the, a consortium of industry groups. Uh, and that's something that we're integrating in. It's got uh, the ability to do flow path and weight estimation. Um, and we're using the external code component um, just to, to do like input and output file wrapping in that case. Um, we are having some issues with that right now. Uh, we're hoping to run a lot of this on Linux uh, clusters and the MPSS Linux install for us has been broken for some reason. Um, so we're, we're working with the consortium to try to figure that out. Um, but as backup and kind of, in, we're also working on PyCycle models here. Um, obviously PyCycle is a tool that has, was developed on top of OpenMDO here at NASA Glenn and provides a lot of the same capabilities. So we're, we're working with that and, um, and you know, that will allow us to both generate an engine deck, uh, and this is some of the table interpolation stuff that we talked about earlier, generate a, an engine deck, which is a, you know, a, a table that, that we, then we can go about interpolating. Um, or we might be able to actually plug PyCycle directly into the, the mission analysis that we're using in Dimos and evaluate it at, e at each uh, time step in that process. So um, we're looking at both these options and, and considering both of them moving forward, and we'll, we'll have to see how they, they perform uh, as we get uh, through the integration. <clears throat> on geometry, our major focus right now is on using OpenVSP and tying that into our, our workflow here. So we're using, you know, the OpenVSP GUI as a starting point uh, for getting the, the initial layout and things uh, and topology uh, of the model set up, uh, but then using the Python API um, to manipulate that and, and make adjustments and change things and do the analysis. Um, so there's a little bit of information there about the inputs and the outputs uh, and the parameters that, that we're using. Um, so we're, we've got you know, the geometry model, we're computing things like wetted areas, doing some of the, hopefully doing some of the CFD meshing and, and getting out step files and things like that in, in the process here as well. Um, still working through some of those details as we go, but um, <clears throat> things like wetted air areas and like that are important for some calculations later on when we get to um, like the aircraft sizing for computing paint weights and things like that as well. So, um, so we're, we're, we're working on not only just drawing the vehicle out here, but using some of the, that um, VSP capability to provide the right inputs uh, for other disciplines uh, farther down the line um, in, our, in our calculations. <clears throat> um, Next up was aerodynamics, and we're taking a, I think, a, a multi-pronged approach here, um, looking at a lot of different op options. Uh, the most basic one is just using what was in uh, the FLOPS um, uh, mission analysis code, which is, you know, obviously being transitioned into the leaps. Um, so this is just an empirical drag buildup um, based on uh, some published uh, delta methods. Um, but we're also working and, and with the VSP Aero team um, to, to use their, uh, I think that's Vortex Lattice uh, methods uh, uh, to, uh, and, and panel methods there to, to integrate that capability so we have a little bit higher fidelity, um, you know, uh, aerodynamic model. Um, 
but then we're also starting to think through, you know, CART 3D as a as a even higher fidelity beyond that, and then hopefully eventually we'll get to MFIS and, and Fun 3D uh, integration um, here as well in this process. So, kind of taking a multi pronged approach here, starting with um, lowest fidelity first in, in the integration, just to make it simple and make sure that we can get things to work, um, but then building up uh, capabilities as we go along for a, a, a collection of tools. Um, like VSP Aero, CART 3D, Fun 3D. Um, and we might be integrating some other things here as well, like the um, one of our test cases is gonna be a truss brace wing, and we were, you know, uh, the Boeing Sugar concept through some of their contracts with them, they've provided some surrogate models of that uh, configuration. So uh, we might be integrating those as well for some of those different uh, disciplines. Um, Similarly to aer the aerodynamics, we're taking a, a multi-pronged approach on structures here as well, kind of trying out a bunch of different tools and options. Um, so the <clears throat> first one here is HCD struct, and this is a software package that I believe Jesse Quinlan, maybe at NASA Langley, originally developed, and it's kind of a front end for NASTRAN and <clears throat> uh, gets a lot of, you know, gets a lot of information from flops and leaps as well as OpenVSP. Um, and then you know can can use that to generate the um, Nastran uh, solution 200 uh, input files and things uh, along the way. So we're looking at that as an option. Um, <clears throat> there's another tool out of NASA Langley called Suitcase, which again uses a lot of the OpenVSP geometry um, to uh, to do that, and um, it's got some like equivalent flat plate uh, structural models. Um, and then the third option that we're really looking at is tax, and I think this is probably the long-term option here. Uh, Tim Brooks, who I think is joining us later today, um, has been kind of driving the development on this and, and using tax plus um, open arrow struct, but also looking at uh, VSP arrow to provide some of the, the aerodynamic information that's needed uh, there and, and and connecting some of that through the MFIS uh, library where possible. So. Um, or, you know, future work here, we're kind of continuing to expand on um, each of these different areas, but looking at the TTBW model, I think that we're going to use as a demo case for this will be a, an important way to, to evaluate that, so. Um, <clears throat> in terms of mission analysis, uh, I'll maybe spend a little bit more time talking about this because you've heard a little bit about it, um, but wanted to spend a little bit more time here. Um, when we started this mbsa &E effort, a little over a year ago, um, we were starting with the the leaps code uh, from NASA Langley. Uh, it's kind of a Python replacement for flops, um, and we were, as we were evaluating that, we we started porting that into uh, and and building it on top of Dimos for doing trajectory analysis, and we were calling that Leaps 2.0. So it's taking the original Python port of of flops and and uh, getting it to work well with Dimos for tra the trajectory optimization. Um, and so we did that. We worked through all the uh, empirical weight correlations, the low fidelity aerodynamic, you know, empirical models that I just mentioned on, on a previous slide, and also this energy height based equations of motion that they use in, in their tool. Um, and we did a whole bunch of you know, unit testing and regression testing along, that, along the way to compare back to flops. And we're getting some pretty good results. Uh, the trajectory that you see there um, is, is an example of what we're getting out of um, our LEAPS 2.0 capability. And we, we've started to integrate that with the um, MBSA and E activities and things. But we also recognize that there was a similar capability being developed in another part of NASA um, called GASPI, which was, there's a general, I think it's the General Aviation synth synthesis, uh, synthesis Program, right, Jennifer? <laughs> um, and they were porting that. That was an old Fortran code that they were also porting to Python along the way. Um, and the tools had very similar objectives, they were both aircraft sizing mission analysis tools, um, and they were both being ported to run on top of Dimos and things like that, so we were said, why are we developing these separately? So that's what Aviary is, right? It's a unified aircraft sizing and, air, uh, and mission analysis tool, right? So it's gonna combine uh, the best capabilities that we have out of uh, LEAPS 2.0 and GASPI into a new OpenMDO and Dimos-based uh, tool, and so it'll include all the, the empirical weight correlations and aerodynamic calculations from both tools, as well as, um, you know, uh, LEAPS uses this energy height, 
you know, uh, equation to motion. Uh, Gatsby uses something that's a little bit more two-dimension, two two-doff, right? Um, and so we're gonna allow basically for both of those things to be used in the same code base so that hopefully everybody will be using that s the same aviary code uh, moving forward uh, for that as a replacement for both GASP, GASP and the original FLOPS code. So um, we are gonna try to release this open source as soon as we can. Um, we've, I think we've tried to start the paperwork for that here um, and we're making progress. Um, that's being supported by multiple NASA projects, so we really see that as a key cornerstone for uh, a lot of our work across um, multiple projects here uh, within the agency. So um, Jennifer's leading, wave her, wave her hand over there, she's leading a lot of the development on that. We're, we are um, trying to get to an initial capability of the integrated uh, tool set, I think, here at the end of January, um, and then have the ability to do, you know, some more complicated vehicles, including some electric aircraft propulsion um, by the end of our fiscal year here uh, in September of, of 23, so. Um, <clears throat> so that's one of our big pushes within this overall uh, framework development is on modernizing our mission analysis and aircraft sizing capabilities uh, there as well. Um, <clears throat> so quickly on stability and control, um, we're developing some kind of uh, implementing some textbook methods and some other lower mid fidelity methods here to get, um, you know, tail sizing, uh, volume, you know, coefficients and things like that out of that process using those as constraints in our overall optimization or uh, MBSA and E integration. Um, and so we've we've computed, we've got things for static uh, margins, neutral points, things like that being developed, one engine and operative for, for vertical tail sizing. Um, starting to think about uh, some of the dynamic stability and control um, requirements that might be you know, placed on the vehicle and, and c developing components uh, for each one of those. So some of our member, the members of our team, Felipe Valdez at uh, NASA Armstrong in California um, has been leading a lot of this work to um, develop um, components within OpenMDO that can do all these different calculations. And I think lastly here, um, one of the new disciplines that we're trying to add in is, is cost estimation. And so uh, we've worked at NASA for a number of years with uh, Techload A Research, and they uh, developed a tool called Peters, which is the probabilistic technology investment uh, ranking system. Um, and so that's a, an economic model that they have that you know includes development, production, operations, costs, and it'll generate uh, direct operating costs plus uh, interest um, uh, metrics that then we can use to kind of evaluate um, different configurations from a, a, a cost perspective. Um, so that tool was actually originally developed in Excel and a number of other things, and as we were looking at it, that's not gonna work well with OpenMDO. So um, Peter Frederick, who's the developer of Peters, um, uh, has, been working over the last six-ish months, and he's actually ported a lot of that uh, calculation into uh, OpenMDO and Python uh, so that we can integrate with that, and I think he's also integrated, uh, implemented analytic derivatives and things as well along the way. So he's got some additional testing to do there, and we, we haven't really started the integration of that with the overall mbsa &E framework, but in terms of developing a new, new tool as part of this process uh, or recreating a, a tool that he already had, but in something that's gonna work with our OpenMDO framework, um, he's done a great job there. Oh, <clears throat> one more thing um, here is, is MBSE uh, and our integration with that. So we're um, you know, starting to, to explore this space. Uh, we've had a number of discussions with the industry of that there's a lot of people trying to figure out how do you connect MDAO and MBSE into something that's uh, usable and, and provides some, some valuable information. So we're working through um, developing some MBSE models with uh, the tool here that we were using at NASA's Magic Draw, but developing the MBSE models for, you know, for example, for a wing and starting to figure out how do we connect that to, to MDAO and what that's gonna look like and how, how we're gonna pass data and things around. So uh, Bijan Faisal, who is at, at Georgia Tech uh, with some of our colleagues there, uh, is now a part of the NASA team and he's working through kind of um, building up the, the MBSE descriptive models and starting to think about ex, you know, how you create executable models or parametric MBSE models 
and and coupling those um, between MDAO and and you know Magic Draw in this particular case. So we're really trying to figure that um, space out. It's it's something that's foreign to some of us that really focus on MDAO and, and systems and analysis. Um, so we're trying to figure that out uh, here, but we'll be you know. Bajan has been great at, at getting that started here, and we'll be, you know, wanting to collaborate with, with folks on that here as we move forward. So, all right. So, uh, with the last few minutes that I've got left here, I wanted to, to run through a few closing thoughts. Uh, this is really just a summary slide of, of everything that I've said in the previous sections here. We're really, um, we, we initiated fr development of this uh, MBSA and E framework here in FY22. Um, and we've been making really great strides, I think, in all the different discipline areas, getting um, models built and getting those disciplinary tools where possible integrated with uh, OpenMDAO. Uh, and um, we're almost done with a conventional tube and wing demonstration case of all these integrated tools together. Um, it's probably not gonna have a ton of optimization in it at this point, but um, we, we will at least be able to do a single pass through um, with some limited optimization in, in uh, Dimos and Aviary uh, in some cases here um, to get that working. We've also, you know, collaborated with a lot of great uh, projects and had a lot of great success with getting leaps developed and, and starting the, the Aviary work here as well. Um, and we're, like I said, uh, engaged with the MBSE um, work here and, and starting to work with the NASA community of practice on that effort. Um, Future work, we've got a few different demo cases, you know, a conventional tube and wing aircraft that's a NASA-based design. It's called the N3CC. Um, and then we're doing, gonna look at a TTW with, uh, hopefully with electric aircraft propulsion on it for um, another demonstration case, just because that will help push our framework development um, to include some additional disciplines. And, and that's likely gonna be a configuration that we're gonna have to evaluate at some point in the future. Um, although we're, we'll have to evaluate many more, I'm sure. Um, we're continuing exploration of this MBSE connection to MDAO. Um, starting to think about some additional disciplines. I didn't really talk much about UQ, but Ben Phillips uh, will be uh, helping us out with that here as we move forward. We haven't started thinking about uh, uh, electrical propulsion components, although we need to start bringing those in for an EAP configuration. We've done some of that in the past, uh, but haven't really started that with this team yet. And then acoustics is gonna be another area that we wanna include in here that we haven't really mentioned uh, yet. And so there's gonna be a lot of coordination uh, with the you know, projects internal to NASA, but we're also hopefully in the next month or so gonna be you know, reaching out to industry and academia to collaborate with them on development of some of this framework and, and getting some of their capabilities um, into, you know, partnering with them to bring some capabilities into to this framework from their perspective as well. Um, so I wanted to end on one chart here that's very OpenMDO specific uh, with some of our challenges, maybe, maybe related observations, uh, just for people to think about. Um, so I just wanted to say this, this effort, I think, is really ambitious uh, on our part to try to apply OpenMDO. Justin likes to say, at, at one point a few years ago when we were doing something else, I would, Justin said that I was trying to break OpenMDO uh, by, by making the biggest, most complicated problem we could. And I think I'm doing that again, <laughs> unfortunately. I, I believe the term was arms race. Yeah. You, OpenMDO and the, the development team and the applications team are in a perpetual arms race. Yeah. Uh, the development team tries to make it possible to do something hard, and then Eric says, oh yeah? <laughs> <laughs> So, so we're, we're, you know, we're, we're, it's an ambitious effort, but it's, it's a multi-year thing. Um, we have strong support from, from ARMD leadership uh, on, on doing this, and they've given us additional, you know, resources uh, to make this happen because they see it as a critical part of our Sustainable Flight National Partnership uh, overall plan to do these digital integration and digital flight tests at the end to show the overall benefit of all the technologies that we're, we're working on. Um, so we're trying to coordinate. One of the challenges that I think we're having probably as a team is just coordinating and integrating a lot of different diff disciplinary experts from across the NASA agency um, as part of this team and, and getting them all to talk to each other and getting their tools to work together. Um, so uh, one of the things we're trying to do in this area that 
might just be generally of interest to folks is we're trying to come up with a little bit of a naming convention of how we're going to define variables across all these tools, at least on the interface uh, side. So we've started to prototype this, and this is uh, something that's coming out of kind of aviary, um, but naming things aircraft colon wing colon span makes it very clear what that variable is and, and where it, you know what it relates to on the vehicle. We also have some things like mission design range, for example. It's a little bit verbose uh, and, and might be a lot to type, type out, but hopefully we're trying to make it so that all these tools can use that same um, set of you know, variable names so that we can do things like promotes and things like that to help connect stuff together. Um, we're starting to you know, run into uh, computational cost issues, as you can imagine, as we start to throw in tax or HTD struct with Nastran and some of the different, you know, um, CART 3D tools and things like that, computational cost is going to be a little bit uh, difficult, so we're trying to figure out our way around some of that, those issues um, and, and trying to get things up and running on a Linux HPC um, at the same time. And we've tried to really do rigorous uh, testing with integration and unit testing. Um, we've also done something that I think we've maybe mentioned in the past, but something we call spec testing, where we basically say, here's the XDSM, let's all look at it and draw it out and write out the connections, and then we test our implemented components against that XDSM to make sure that they're providing those variable names um, and, and things through that process. Just It helps us make sure that what we think we have on paper with like the XDSM is actually being implemented in the code correctly. So that's something else that we've, we've tried uh, to do. Um, and it's sometimes challenging to, to make that, all that happen with, with new team members. Um, and speaking of new team members, I think one of the, the big challenges for us is there's this persistent need to uh, train people and new users with OpenMDO. And I think I'll highlight here that the new videos that John is producing and he'll talk about on the next presentation are, have been really helpful for getting that started. Um, but we've also found we have to do a lot of pair programming sessions with folks to get them up and running. And um, I also would make the recommendation um, that just going through the documentation sometimes, uh, while it's great, isn't enough because the answer is there for them, right? And so um, I've tried to come up with some, some homework problems uh, that are a little bit challenging for, for new users to then think about, okay, how do I build my own components and link them together? And the, uh, the one that I've come up with that I like the most is just solving an ideal normal shock problem. Um, there's multiple ways to implement that, both explicitly and implicitly uh, within OpenMDO and, and use solvers and things like that to get your answer. So um, it's a good, in my mind, it's a good kind of homework problem that we maybe don't want to provide the answer to on the OpenMDO uh, documentation, but it's something that, it, you know, is a, is a problem that you can give to, to new users to test their knowledge uh, after they've gone through those documents. So. And I think I'm out of time or close enough that- No, we, we can, can, we can have five or 10 minutes of questions. Uh, I will but preface that by saying that uh, like the, the coordination challenge that Eric is talking about with, with this NBSA and E effort, I mean, you're talking about so many different people with so many different expertise and different sub-disciplines, trying to get all those disciplines talking together to make a completed optimization. It is an absolutely huge, enormous challenge. Um, especially like varying fidelity levels as well for these analysis, it's a it's a tremendous challenge. So thank you for leading that. Eric. Yeah, and Elliot's going to be a huge help on all that integration. By the way, <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> you guys should feel a little sympathy for Elliot. I think <laughs> um, not everybody in this room is an aircraft person, aerospace person, but enough of you are to I think appreciate how this is a little bit insane. The goal that Eric's <laughs> setting. Um, I hope that does two things for you. One lets you know that we're probably pushing the framework harder than you are so that it's ready for it when you're trying to do something. Um, and two, maybe encourages you to think a little bigger. Uh, sometimes taking risk isn't the right option, but for us, this kind of risk is worth, worth it. I think the reward is worth it. Um, some of the stuff John talked about earlier with like getting your derivatives right and making your optimizations more stable, we're gonna run into all those challenges here as we try to make all these tools workable in this kind of an environment, but out the other side of that is potentially a much, much more efficient aircraft design capability. Yeah. Um, I hope we're successful, yep. but we're not afraid to fail. <laughs> so with that, open the floor to questions. 
uh, I have one uh, question uh, regarding uh, uh, the problem that you are dealing with. Uh, it's a very large problem, and there are many disciplinary domain uh, attached to your problem, and there are some uh, disciplinary model that can be solved very easily, or some models may be like uh, even uh, CFD or even very uh, difficult to solve, taking a lot of time, computational effort. Mm -hmm. And in that case, uh, do you think uh, if there is a, a distributed uh, optimi uh, distributed uh, formulation for the multidisciplinary design optimization helps, or uh, how do you deal with those kind of different uh, levels of uh, computational costs? <coughs> I'll take this one. Oh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> I, I think you're asking about like distributed versus monolithic optimizations. That is correct. Yeah, uh, my personal recommendation would be to use monolithic ones. If you can, they're much more efficient. Um, that being said, distributed optimizations have some advantages in organizations where you need to separate out the disciplines and do sub-optimizations. Um, but computationally, there's well, I should be careful. I know Airbus folks have published some work recently where they've shown some, some advantages for the distributed stuff, but in most cases, if you have derivatives available everywhere, the monolithic ar architectures are much faster. So, um, and uh, and OpenMDO is set up to run efficiently in yeah. those, in those so situations. In, in case like this very large problems, probably uh, just collecting all the models in single computational uh, framework is challenging. and. Maybe, maybe some distributed optimization problem with some manual iterations in the uh, system level and maybe yeah. subsystem level op, uh, monolithic optimization will be uh, sufficient. Sure, that's, so. that's what I meant by if there's some organizational reasons why distributed methods work well, then I think that those are well suited for those. Mm -hmm. um, but those are the situations you're talking about where there's kind of like a manual iteration loop on the outside. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Even there, I would say each of those sub-optimizations should be monolithic and have derivatives. So, yeah. The, yeah. I mean, well, we might have to do some like sub optimizations in some of the disciplines that we're, we're looking at and then, you know, use those to either build surrogate models or, you know, do something else along the way to make this computationally efficient. We, we haven't quite gotten to that point yet. So we're still exploring and I think we're going to run into a lot of things along the way as we, we do this. So, and that's kind of part of the point of this is to, to stress open MDO in, in addition to, um, uh, the need to, to integrate all these different disciplines together for our, our project, you know, SFNP. Um. So, so, Eric, uh, yeah. thank you very much. Um, I, have a, I have two questions, actually. If you roll back to slide number 22 or something where you show both Magic Draw and, and OpenMDAO together, yeah. So, um, this one? Yeah, yeah, that, that's good. So, I'm trying to get my head around, like, like what the use, I mean, what the vision here is. So are you trying to define the MDO problem in Cameo or Magic Draw and then have uh, open MDAO as kind of like a back end? Or is it using the, the behavior model in Cameo Magic Draw as an analysis, as a, as a, a component in M open MDAO or <coughs> both? I, or uh, this is not my area of expertise, so I don't know. We, we might have to take this discussion offline, but I don't see M, like Magic Draw like spawning off OpenMDO problems to go run and then getting information back. I, I, think, I think they're complementary efforts. It's going to be a little bit more manual connection between the two of them as of right now. And so I don't see MBSE like, or like a SysML model being part of OpenMDO, but I also don't see it like being the master that's running OpenMDO either. Um, so there are some there are some folks at GTRI who actually are doing some work in that area, though. Yeah. I, I'd be happy to connect you guys if you if you're yeah, interested. Yeah, and this is some this is an area that we are trying to figure out actively right now, and I don't have the answers for you. We can maybe talk offline and, and connect on that uh, somewhere, you know, to to talk about some other things. You had a second question, maybe though. My second question. My second question was, what is the size of the problem? So you had the big end end to diagram for your, yeah. So how many design variables and how many KPIs are you <laughs> dealing with? Uh, I, I honestly don't know if, Jennifer, do you or Elliot? Hun, yeah, it's hundreds or. Way, way more than you realize because Dimos is in the loop, so it's yeah. probably closer to thousands, yeah. but a lot of those variables aren't true degrees of freedom in the way you would normally think of them. But hundreds is, is what we would expect. Yeah. Maybe several hundred if you have CFD and geometric design variables in there. Um, 
and, and I don't certainly, know that we're... Certainly far more than 10. Yeah. And I, I mean, like I said earlier, I think we're going to start small and, and grow our way through this. So, you know, we might start with like the lowest fit. We're probably going to start with the lowest fidelity tools we can in each area just to, and that will help us limit the number of inputs and design variables along the way. We might also not optimize the entire thing. We might just say, hey, we're going to hold certain things fixed um, that we know and then build up from there and see see how complicated we can make this because um, it's I, tying together all these disciplines. I, we've done it in some limited capacities and other projects in the past here at NASA, but I don't know that we've tried to do this many connected together all at one time. Um, so, uh, thanks for a nice presentation. Uh, you mentioned analyses that are like over different time scales, right? So if we look at acoustics, that needs an ultra fine time step. But if you're looking at a trajectory, right. you probably have a couple of collocation points or points yeah. throughout the trajectory. How have you thought about how to manage those sort of multiple time scales throughout <clears throat> analysis? I mean, I think in terms of like aviary, we're probably going to run multiple. We're going to run multiple trajectories, um, and, and those will probably be at different time scales. Um, and we're going to have to run multiple trajectories anyways because we're going to probably want to fill out like the payload range diagram, for example. And so you're going to be looking at what's the trajectory for a collection of points that go into that formulate what that looks like. And so we will have probably an acoustic trajectory, for example, that would be higher resolution, but just in the takeoff. And we probably only run like the takeoff and landing portions of that trajectory at high resolution uh, to then couple that into the acoustic analysis. Um, so so we'll, we'll, we'll have to probably do some, you know, different time steps and, and it's not going to be running one mission and optimizing that. It's probably going to be running a mul multiple missions and looking at kind of the overall trade space as well. A little bit down in the weeds, but Rob and Elliot came up with some features in Dimos that most of you have probably never used, but they address this exact thing. They're called tandem phases. Yeah. Um, so check those out. But they, they allow you to kind of do dual time stepping <laughs> in a pretty fancy and we, way. And I guess another, another example of how we've used that in the past is um, if you're looking at like thermal uh, yeah, transients I mean, and things or like electric propulsion, right? Some of the, the time scales on thermal systems are, or other things, you have to track those a little bit yeah, finer. Yeah, much, so, much finer time So yeah. we, we create a, 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 tandem a tandem phase that runs along that, that has finer time steps, but then we make sure that those match up in, in the process as well. Yeah, it's... The tandem phase stuff is pretty nifty, um, but yeah, exactly. The the aircraft scale is basically you don't want to run that at such a fine time step. So, yeah. but the thermal stuff you kind of have to. I think we have one more question down here in the front. He's got a mic. Thanks for your presentation. It's like a very exciting project, and you talk about um, uh, components for evaluating stability. Do you refer to um, aeroelastic stability too? Aeroelastic. Yeah. Um, I don't know that we've. There's, got anything there is there. a little bit of work, but it's at the MFIS level. Looking yeah, at I think I think that's going to come stuff, into yeah. play as we when we look at the like structural analysis couple and the aerodynamic analysis, and there might have to be a feedback loop between those two drawn here, where we'll have to, you know, it's more of an aerostructural optimization probably at that point that we'll be coupling you know higher fidelity you know structural models with the, the higher fidelity arrow is probably where we're heading with that, I would think. You should talk to Kevin Jacobson, who will now raise his hand. <laughs> uh, uh, he's our resident expert on that kind of stuff, but yeah. that's a big lift to pull dynamic type stuff into here. Um, and, so that's and, far, farther out on the time scale. Yeah. So I think I'm getting lots of questions. This is good. <laughs> Well, yeah, and Elliot, I we, know ha we have time for one or two more questions. Okay. Okay, I had two, but I stick to one. Okay. <laughs> um, so you mentioned in your final thoughts the the, um, the issue of the variable naming, mm -hmm. uh, which is obviously a um, um, uh, blocking point for every OAD guys. Yeah. So uh, do you do you have plan to define kind of a standard or hierarchy standard for for these variables? that are existing. Yeah. Along the community, but do you plan to make public one specific? Uh, yeah, well, I, I think I should say too on this entire effort, at some, we're hoping to make as much of this open as we can. Um, there might be some of it that we can't make open, like certain models and things like that. But we're hoping to make a bunch of this open um, for for the public to use. 
I think we have looked at some standards. Um, I'm not sure that we've identified any that we say exactly suit our needs. Um, so that's kind of why we're looking at our own, uh, you know, form of what this looks like. Um, but yeah, I think we probably can publish, and this will be part of aviary and the, the public release of aviary. So um, we, we've got good definitions, I think. Um, I'm looking at Jennifer because so she can nod and agree with me. But, you know, we, we've tried to define for some of these, especially when we're going through aviary, what the variable name is, but then how does that, um, how does that link to like GASPY or FLOPS and those variables that were used internal to that code and having a dictionary basically that links all these together, defines the units, clearly defines what they are. There's been a few cases where I feel like there's some variables that are, everybody says, oh, it's, you know, cord or something like that, but it's like, what's the, the actual definition of where that's at or like, you know, certain, there's, uh, Jennifer can maybe chime in on other things, but there's probably been like, there's been variables where you say like, this should be a common definition, but then you look at it and it's like, well, maybe one code interprets it one way and one code interprets it, interprets it another way. So we really have to be careful on our definition to, to clearly state what that is. Um, and, and I think we can make, that should be something that we can share uh, more broadly, so. Yeah, pretty much everything that Eric said is spot on. So something that we've been discovering as we've been trying to blend the GASP code and the FLOPS code together is you'll have the same variable that might have a really specific piece of the definition that's different in the two codes. So for example, payload weight might not include cargo in one code and include it in the other. So we're trying to be really clear and specific in our variable dictionary as to exactly what the definition is. And we're also including information about the history of the variable, what code it comes from, where you can find it, that sort of thing. And like Eric said, that dictionary is going to be released with the code. So you can look at all of that and we would love to have your feedback if you would like something changed. And this is, I should say too, that's an, the, your question about the kind of variable hierarchy and definitions, I think that's an area that we'd love to collaborate with some, some folks outside of NASA on as well too. So if, if there's additional ideas there, uh, we might be interested in, in talking as well. So somewhat related to this, uh, are you guys considering Open Caesar developed by the JPL? Uh, I'm not familiar with that okay. tool, so. Uh, so Nova will check it out. <laughs> yeah. What was it called again? Open Caesar? Okay. I think while they're setting up lunch, we have time for one last question. Okay. Um, can you speak a little bit to, I think Elliot was alluding to this, um, the process of how you're planning to evolve fidelity over the course of the design process? Um, I think that's a pretty big challenge. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a challenge. Um, you said it was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I, like I said, I think we're going to start low fidelity and kind of work our way up. Um, the integration is going to be uh, obviously a, a big thing. I mean, I'm hoping that we can, as I mentioned at one point on the slides here, you know, we've done a pretty good job with coming up with testing, you know, it, trying to adopt the same like unit testing, regression testing type stuff that we've done that OpenMDO and Dymos have done with this application. And so I'm hoping that maybe along the way we can, you know, develop some tests that, you know, at least check to make sure that things are integrated well and, and get, that we're getting reasonable answers. They're probably not going to be exactly the same as you go from one fidelity to the next, but make sure that we're not too far off and things. So uh, I don't know. Are there other? I mean, uh, my, my suggestion is always test test your tiny little component, then test that and it, when it's integrated into something else, and then test that and like yeah. just test absolutely at every level, uh, because when you get to the to the problem level and you have seven different subsystems you're trying to integrate, that is not the time to write tests. You should have already had tests all the way down, yeah. just like it's turtles, turtles all the way down. And uh, with that, uh, Eric, thank you very much. Thanks. We're gonna have.